welcome back. Uh, I'm starting a new project today and as you can see I'm on the default page that Scratch creates when you're working on a new project. The first thing I'm going to do is right click on our cat and I'm going to click delete. So the game we're creating today is going to be like the snake game that most people have played where you use the arrow keys to move the snake around and you're trying to collect some object. Um, in our case it's going to be an apple. So the first thing I'm going to need is a new sprite. And I'm going to so I'm going to go to paint new sprite. I'm going to grab the circle. I'm going to make sure I fill the circle and I'm going to make mine green. So let's go ahead and make your circle. And don't make it too large or the game will be too easy. And at this point click on the scripts tab. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab a couple of events. I'm going to pull over four of these when space key press. So one, two, three, four. And we're going to need one for left, right, up, and down. So I'm going to make this one the left arrow, I'm going to make this one the right arrow, I'm going to make this one the up arrow, and this one's going to be for our down arrow. At that point, we're going to need a motion block. So click motion, and let's pull over this point in direction. I'm going to need four of these as well. So go ahead and connect them. Now at this point, when the left arrow is pressed, I want to point in direction left, right arrow right, up, and down. Now I need to know what to do when the start flag is pressed. So go ahead and grab an event and pull over when start is clicked and let's do an event. Let's drag over a broadcast message and make a new message called start game. So now I'm going to add another event called when I receive message and I'm going to change this message to start game. So when the game starts, I want to reset the position of our snake. So I'm going to go to motion. I'm going to grab the go to x, y. And let's make that negative 100 and 0. Now let's go ahead and click start and see what happens. So notice this is where our snake is posi positioned to begin with. Now the next tab I want to add is point in direction 90 degrees. So go ahead and just drag this over and connect it and make sure it's on 90 for right. This will make our snake move in the right um, to the right to begin with. The next thing you're going to want to do is add some data. So this is a new um, block that we haven't used before. So I'm going to make a variable and a variable is just a local piece of information that you want to keep up with while your game's going on. And for ours, we're going to need a variable to store our speed. Since we're going to be changing during this game how fast our snake is moving, we're going to store the information about how fast it's going in this speed variable. And the speed variable is going to be available for all sprites. And you'll see why we're doing this in just one moment. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to drag set speed to zero and connect it right here. And I'm going to change this speed to 5. Now I'm going to want to grab the looks tab and I'm going to want to grab show. Since we're going to create a screen to tell the user they lost when they run into the walls, um, we're going to want to make sure we show when we start the game. So now we're going to need a forever loop. So go to control and pull over forever and connect it here. Now I want you to go to motion and let's pull in move and right now it says 10 steps so if we go ahead and click start notice we just moved over to the right and we can click any direction and we'll move 10 steps. But we want the number of steps we move every second to be changed we want it to be dynamic. So we're going to use this speed variable to determine how fast we move. So go back to data 
And notice our speed variable is right here. So pull speed over and replace the 10 with speed. Now let's start the game over again. And notice we're moving much slower now. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add my second sprite. So go ahead and click Choose Sprite from Library. And for me, I'm going to grab an apple. So I'm going to click Apple, I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to go to Costumes because I want to change the size of the apple. I want to make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to click on the apple, I'm going to just drag this down. I'm going to drag it down just a bit more. I'll make sure I put it right here in the center. Now I'm going to click Scripts. And now we're going to need a event. So I'm going to pull over when space keys pressed. So I'm going to pull over when I receive start game. And now I'm going to go to control and pull over a forever loop. Now I want to know. Um, I want now I want to use an if then block. So I'm going to pull over if then. And I want to go to sensing. And I want to pull over touching and put it right here. So if we're touching sprite one, then I want to change the position of the apple. So I'm going to go to motion and pull over go to. Now go to operators. And what we're going to do is every time our snake catches the apple, we want the apple to show up in random positions on the screen. So what I want you to do is I want you to pull over pick random and place it in the X block. I'm going to zoom out to give myself a bit more room. Now pull over pick random again and place it in the Y block. Now I want you to change pick random in the X block, make it negative two two zero two 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 zero I also want you to do the same thing for the Y I want you to do negative 160 and 160 now I want you to go to data and move over change speed by and let's make this 0.5 now I'm going to go ahead and click the green arrow and notice our apple moved when we caught it. So every time I catch the apple my snake moves a little bit faster a little bit faster and notice in the upper left hand corner the speed variable is actually increasing every time that I hit the apple. But now I decide there's another variable I want to keep up with. I want to create a new variable called score to keep up with how many times the user has actually caught the apple. So we're going to do this for all sprites. We'll go ahead and click OK. So now at this point I want to create another event. So I'm going to drag over when I receive start game and place it here. So go back to data and let's pull over set score to zero because every time the game starts over I want to put the score back to zero. Now where we change speed by 0 0.5 we only do this if we're touching the apple which means we just caught an apple. So what we need to do here is go ahead and increment the score as well. We need to add one to the score. So pull over change score by one and place it right here in between. Now I'm going to start the game over again and notice the score went up by one, two, three, four, five, and you get the idea. Now things are working pretty well so far but one thing I don't like is if the apple accidentally shows up in this corner we have speed and score showing here so it may block the apple. So I'm going to go ahead and hide speed for now since our user doesn't really care about seeing 
the speed variable during the game. So go back to data and just uncheck speed. So notice it doesn't show anymore. So now we need to deal with what happens when the user runs into the wall. We need to make something happen when they lose the game. So go ahead and click on Sprite 1. And I'm going to drag over a event. So pull over when I receive, start game. Do it with the drop down and create a new message. And I'm going to call this one You Lost. And click OK. Now when we lose the game, we want to go ahead and hide the snake and hide the apple. So go ahead and pull over hide and let's right click and click duplicate and click on the apple. And if we go to the apple, notice it pasted when I receive you lost hide. So now we need to define what losing means. We need to know um, one of our sprites needs to know when we've actually lost the game. So how we're going to do this is in this forever loop right here um, for the snake, we're going to pull over an if-then event or an if-then control. So go to control and pull over if-then and put it right under move speed steps. Now this is getting in the way so I'm just going to move it right over here and delete the other one. So now what we need to do is we need some condition to test for. And we're going to have that be, um, go ahead and go to sensing. Let's pull over touching and put it right here. Click the drop down and we're going to click edge. And edge is just defined as the edges of this square. So when our snake runs into the edge here, we're going to trigger um, a broadcast. So go to events, pull over broadcast, put it right here in the center and we're gonna make it say you lost so notice when the snake ran into the edge that time both the apple and the snake disappeared now let's go to control and pull over stop and let's put this script so this is just gonna stop the entire um, game when we run into the edge. So one more thing I want to do is I don't want this score variable showing up while I'm playing the game. So I'm going to go to Apple and this is a personal preference. You can leave it if you want it there. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull over looks here. So when I receive start game, set score to zero and I'm going to do show. Then I'm going to go to data and I'm going to click on hide variable score and drag it over. Now I'm going to pull over a new event. What I'm going to do is on this when I receive you lost, it does hide but I'm going to make it when we lose the game, I'm going to make it show the variable score. So let's click start again. Notice the score variable is now hidden um, from the top, or top left corner. But when I run into the wall, now the score shows. Now, one last thing I'm going to want, I want a screen that tells the user they lost and shows them their score. So go ahead and click on Backdrop here. Click Backdrops, and I'm going to create a new one. And actually, I'll just model it off this one, so I'll right-click and click Duplicate. And I'm going to dye the background on mine to red. Now I'm going to add some text. I'm going to click white. I'm going to type in you lose. Now I'm going to increase the size of the text. Now let's go back to Sprite 1 and go to scripts. Go to looks and drag over switch backdrop to backdrop 2 when I receive you lost and pull over switch backdrop to backdrop 1 for when the start flag is pressed. So I'm going to click start and notice everything's white and when I run into the wall I see my score and I see you lose.
and that's your complete snake game.